Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm joined on the podcast today by Laura Scalzo, author of the new novel, American Arcadia. Author Maria Rodale wrote about the novel, American Arcadia evokes a moment in time when the world was shifting, awakening to the confusion and suffering of AIDS, when secrets could no longer be hidden, and mysteries of sex, love, and life must be revealed. Like a great jazz song, the novel weaves stories together, builds to a crescendo, and ultimately creates a haunting melody that lingers after, after the last page is turned. Laura, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, if someone hasn't yet heard about your novel, American Arcadia, how would you describe the novel? Um, I would describe it in the briefest way uh, as a coming-of-age story in 1985 in New York City. Um, Um, I've been asked to elaborate on that, and I uh, made a quick elevator after much (laughs) contemplation. As you know, I think every... (laughs) Every writer, after they write a book, when someone asks what's it about, it's like, I can't answer that. So after much contemplation, I came up with friendship, love, sex, money, power, death. And I would think that covers almost everything. But um, I really, uh, there's a lot of uh, main story and a lot of subplots all over together. Um, So it's kind of hard to describe, but I think that covers it. Do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to writing the novel? Oh, absolutely. Um, in fact, I had, as I was trying to figure out how to describe it, I had the extreme luck of happening upon page one of my notes on the first day I started writing. And the first three things of the page said harm- harmonics, transcendence, love. And, um, So what that comes from is in 1985, on December 21st, in a secret late night show, I I saw Jaco Pastorius play, and um, I had never heard of him before. And um, it was and continues to be in my memory of transcendent experience. And so that was a long time ago. And I, <laughs> and I've held it. Yeah, I know. I, I've held it with me all this time. And it's Must one have of been those amazing things. performance. Well, it, it was, I, I, I was there and I, it was the middle of the night and he came out and um, a lot of people are, some are, and some aren't familiar with <laughs> Jacob Astorius, but he basically reinvented the bass he took the frets mm-hmm. off and played it harmonics, which is a way of vibrating the strings that sound completely different from what you had been used to. And um, but there was something else. I it wasn't just me calling it transcendent. It's if you if you Google him, you'll find I, that that's probably one of the most common um, mm-hmm. words attached mm-hmm. to him. But I, I was there, mm-hmm. and I thought he's. He's opened a door. He's opened a portal to some mm-hmm. other information that's not of this world. And yeah. I spent, you know, all this time I, wondering what that yeah. meant and what it meant to me. And that yeah, was the I genesis of the novel. Well, as we mentioned, the 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 novel is set in New York City in the 1980s. And I know that you lived in the city at that time. While you were writing the novel, did you do any research to just kind of remind yourself and put yourself back? in those days of the city? Thank you. That's such a good question. Um, because I did my, my memory and, um, and then, so then you'd have questions. So a perfect example is I lived for a year, I think it was 84 with my grandmother on Staten Island. So I did that thing where you take the ferry every day to work and take it home. <laughs> I know, I know it's a, and, um, anyway, um, uh, I was like, okay, I pass the Statue of Liberty every day. And there was an immigration sort of sub-story in in the novel. So that is a a very important piece of it. And I remembered, I was like, oh my gosh, she's under scaffolding. I had totally forgotten about that. So then I started researching about when the Statue of Liberty was under scaffolding and that her torch had been severed. And that on New Year's Day, it was in the Rose Bowl Parade. So I don't remember that from real time, but that is from research from my own memory. And that appears very, I think, on like the third or fourth page. 
that yeah. um, Mina, the protagonist, right. is watching the Rose Pole Parade. And she sees her torch going down yeah. the street in California and how odd that is. Wow, I, I had no idea that that happened. Among and, other things, but much of, as you say, you know, uh, much of the, my memory yeah, they, was sparked are, to research. And then sure. the more you look into it, the more you add back. Sure. Well, what was your own writing journey that led you to writing and getting your debut novel published? Well, I always considered myself a writer from a very young age. And I think that's such an interesting conversation because the classic question is, if you're a writer and not writing, why do you still think you're a writer? And I think it gets answered a million different ways. Uh, but one of the things that I feel is that I always see uh, the world in story. And I think story is, when we tell the story, it's an, a relief and also um, an exhilaration of actual events. And it's how we process it as humans. So all these years, so I, I was an English major and I thought I would be a writer, but I didn't, I moved to New York. I didn't really know how to figure that out. And I did a lot of, I attempt, I worked as a waitress and then, you know, I was just barely making, I was not really surviving. <laughs> and then, um, as luck would have it, I ended up getting in a training program on Wall Street. And so then that took up all my time and energy and I, you know, experienced that whole thing. And then I worked and worked and I never really had time to write. And then I had kids and when my kids were, yeah, I turned 50 basically. And I thought, well, you know, you're going to be dead soon. So what are you thinking? This, you know, you have to either accept what you believe you're here for, or you have to be very disappointed. And I just decided to dig in and my kids were a little older, you know, and I would be right. I'd have my laptop at the hockey rink or, at, you know, dance class. And I just, just thought, this is it. This is my chance. This is my time. And I was very serious. And I wrote all the time in around all my life. And then as my kids got much older, I was able to, for this book, American Arcadia, which is my second novel, I um, I was able to just fully focus full time. And it, and it, I wrote it in short order, actually. Well, you mentioned your notes earlier for American Arcadia that you went back and looked on when you first began writing it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what your writing process is when you're working on a novel? Um uh, Are you someone yeah. who, who who outlines extensively, or what's the process like for you? Well, I I will say the first I I I don't read a lot of craft books, but there's two craft books that I have read. The first was Stephen King on writing, which a lot of people agree is a great way to say you can do it if you commit to it. And he's all about, or what I took from it was just sit down and do it. So I, you know, the cancer plotter conversation, I never thought I could ever Every. write a plot. I just thought I could sit down and do it. And that yeah. is how I got the first book yeah. out. But oh my gosh, I don't know, 50 drafts. I, I can't even, I, I stopped counting. And yeah. so when it came to this one, I realized I, that the way to get <laughs> this accomplished was to um, have uh, some kind of outline, some kind of parameters. So I started building parameters. I decided the year, you know, because I had this experience. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, let's make a year, 1985. I um, I made a very complicated pictograph. So I guess I must be more of a visual person. But mm -hmm. I, if you can imagine when you write a story, you make that sort of rising action, climax, following action, conclusion. I made that, yeah. and then I drew, kept going over and over on it. The first thing I put in was the weather, <laughs> just to, <laughs> uh, you know, just to have some kind of parameters. And in fact, that was Hurricane Gloria, Great. which shows up that year Thanks. in September, I think. So that shows That's up in the novel. There's a lot of fun. weather in the novel, and surprisingly, um, so I did. I planned it. I planned this one, and I started writing. In fact, I started January <laughs> one of 2019, and in January March. April 1, I had two maybe chapters, and I had an elaborate plan, and I started writing nonstop from April 1, and I finished at the end of September. 
um, well, which is very fast. But I had but a, I had a plan, thing. and that is I will tell as a piece of advice. Like if you can see where you're going every when you sit down to go there, yeah. it comes a lot faster. And so this draft that, was never changed. All the changes in this draft was all you know continuity and typos and all that kind of mm-hmm. thing. But it's mm-hmm. never changed from you know mm-hmm. its original progression. Mm-hmm. That's great. Are you working on a new novel now? I started it. And um, so when the publisher bought this novel, it's sort of in a two-year pipeline. Mm-hmm. And so for the first year, Let's I have been working on another novel that is uh, takes place in... Uh, my idea was um, in 1919 when Prohibition came into mm-hmm. being law, but actually passed, it didn't to law until mid Jan 2020. So I thought it would be really interesting to write about basically like this uh, national last call. So I really have gotten very interested in that whole time period. But then when I got uh, into the pipeline, right? So my time came up with the publisher, I put that yeah. aside yeah. because it was all, you know, getting <laughs> full, full court press. Uh, and now, you know, the novel's out, so we're having a lot of conversations and a lot of a uh, bit of travel. And then I think by September, I'm going to go full force back into what I had been working on. Given your experience of, um, as you as you mentioned earlier, of kind of writing, you know, let's say later in life, um, and and now you have two novels out. What writing advice would you offer for those? who may be listening, who are working on their own stories or novels? You know, um, there's so many, like you could say, oh, write every day or Mm -hmm. write. And and I really believe that, you know, you know that if you have that in there, that you are going to start doing crazy things to make it happen. (laughs) And, (laughs) and that like, let yourself have it, let yourself have, that idea think, that this is what I was born to do. And, and even if, um, uh, you know, I have stories that are uh, on the shelf that are never going to be published or, you know, I've sent them out and I've had them returned. But every once in a while, I'll be walking down the street and I'll say, oh, I should write about that. And I think, oh, I did. I did. I have that. I wrote about that. And it is the best feeling in the world. And, you know, the other thing I would say, so don't give up on that idea that that, that you're built for it because you know, you know. And the other thing I would say is somewhere along the line, because there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of opinions, make a a really clear idea about who you are and what you want to say and take the good advice and let go of the random advice that's not helping. And I, you know, I work with, um, I volunteer to help kids with their essays. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the first thing we talk about is permission. And the second thing we talk, like, that you are allowed to say what you want to say, be who you want to be on the page. And the second thing we talk about is that you have, and it took me into my 50s to really believe this, my experience, my Mm -hmm. genetic Mm -hmm. code, my life experience, my education, everything that I have done makes me a completely unique being. So when I sit down and write a paragraph on the page, no one else can do that. And that is absolutely true for every single person. Your words are completely unique and they matter because I think one of the things that stop writers a lot is like, who cares? Who who wants to know this? Well, we everyone does. We care because we're not in right. your head and we don't know your world and we don't know your life. So how you want to bring it to us matters. <laughs> and I think once you realize right. that, that it's important, then you go, Oh, okay. I'm here. I'm here to do it. And I'm allowed. Right. So that, that would be what I would offer. Yeah. That's, that's great advice. What novels or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoy? Oh, uh, I will say last year I read, um, mm-hmm. Love Song of W. E. D. E. B. Du Bois, mm-hmm. which is I, I shelved it next to my Iliad and Odyssey. It is such an incredible I, book in terms of how the breadth and depth of the span. And I, um, I, I really love that. Um, I, you know, I, I self soothe with, <laughs> with, um, mm-hmm. classical. 
work. So I'll often go back. Like I read Emily Wilson's version of the Odyssey. She's the first woman, I think, to make that translation. And she's about to come out with the Iliad. And, you know, just makes me happy to open it up and pick it up (laughs) anywhere. And, And because those stories... Are you know when you're novel writing? I think one of the uh, greatest things to remember is so it's universal and it's uh, personal. And when you read as far back as you can get, and that those universal themes exist so much in the forefront, you think, okay, I, I can participate in in the river of offerings because these scenarios. Family strife, political strife, national, local, everything. The, the, the stories don't change, but the telling is, you know, if you can make it interesting, is we're always there for it because we're always trying to figure out how to solve what it means to be a human on this planet. Where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your novels? I am laurascalzo.com. And yeah. I'm on Instagram at LJ Scalzo, and I'm on Facebook um, at Laura Scalzo. So that's you know I'm, I and I love I love uh, hearing from people and talking about books and writing. So um, you know I'm very open to any kind of conversation people might be interested in. Well, again, we've been speaking to Laura Scalzo, author of the new novel American Arcadia. The novel is available now, so go buy a copy. And Laura, thanks for doing this interview. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for having me. I really, really appreciate it. (laughs) Thank you.